Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. What? Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Erin and today we're going to be playing more Disco Elysium. This game really surprised me in many, many ways. One of them being I didn't expect to like it as much as I did and now I'm kind of obsessed and I can't get enough. <laughs> I actually recorded an episode earlier today and I paused because I had to do go do something. After a while of sitting there, I really missed this game again and I was like, you know what? I think I want to sit down and record more of it because I just really enjoyed it so much. By the way, those fake nails I was wearing in the second part, yeah, they, they didn't last me the whole day. This this finger is um, it's like a little baby finger now because it's missing a piece. This thumbnail broke off like <laughs> twice, so I glued it back on and I used way too much glue and I glued part of my finger to the nail and I had to kind of rip it off a little bit and that hurt. And then <laughs> this nail is on here so good, I don't think it's ever going to come off. This episode's going to be very messy, very relaxed. Um, it's kind of later in the evening and I, like I normally say, I record mostly during the morning. So when I record late at night, I get kind of weird and tired and I'm like, <laughs> should probably not do it this time of day, but it's fine. Honestly, I might make a snack or something, I might get popcorn. I don't really know. Guys, like I said, a relaxing video. Just sit back, grab a snack, drink, whatever. Come chill with me here because I'm going to be doing whatever this episode. This is my exploration episode. So in the last episode, we finally went around back of the Whirling in Rags to find the dead body that was hanging in the tree. This guy was apparently some sort of security guard, but that's still sort of up in the air right now because he's wearing this very expensive armor that I guess is very rare and they only give it to people who are very like high ranking or if they just have a lot of money, I'm pretty sure. One of the side quests is to find the rest of the armor that that security guard was wearing and piece together that. We also found a serial number on his boot, so maybe we'll be able to trace that using the radio in Kim's motor carriage. I think it's cute that Kim is so protective of his car. I just think it's so adorable. Kim is so adorable. I am team protect Kim at all costs. I will literally fight anyone who dare hurt him. Oh, the dialogue is so good. All the options are so funny. I love the part where you could pat the mailbox or kick it. I chose to pat the mailbox because I'm not a monster, okay? There are a few little glitches here and there where the dialogue is not being spoken, and that was kind of annoying. I hope I don't have any more of those issues. I feel like it is just sort of an early game bug that'll probably be patched in the coming weeks or so, um, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, about the body, we were trying to get it down because obviously you don't want that body hanging up there for that long. It's already been up there for much longer than it should have been. So we've been trying to get it down, but then realized that you can't get it down unless we have some help, which is where the union workers come in. Interestingly enough, they're also the people that we're suspecting did this to the man. We found a set of eight footprints in the mud around his hanging body so it looked like a lynching apparently anyways i'm just gonna hop right in and mess around and do some side quests maybe if i can if not we'll just go with more story and see what happens so yeah let's not waste more time and let's get back into this game see what happens next okay we're back hi kuno how are you kuno you got my popcorn you got a whole bowl of popcorn here I don't need this much popcorn, but man, popcorn is so good. It looks like he's trying to hit Kim's head. <laughs> he's like trying to- I like it cut, G. <laughs> oh, I can level up again. Would you look at that? And I also have cranberry juice. Is this ASMR? Let's do one for endurance, because I basically have no physique. So, I think that's what I'm going to do. Cool. This instant photo of tattoo. Oh, Lieutenant Kitsuragi snapped this photo of the hangman's tattoos. It's displayed the intricate web of blue lines stretching across his torso. You have to admit it looks quite cool. Oh, this is what we fished out of the trash. <laughs> this is the ledger you found in the trash. It's full of notes written in a man's dense cursive. Have a closer look. Maybe it can be salvaged to start keeping notes on the case. Oh. It's the ledger you found in the trash. A pitiful cabbage of white and yellow papers hanging from plastic board. 
barely held together by a metal clip. This sad display is made complete by the faint smell of urinal cleaner. Urinal? <laughs> Anything else? There's a piece of toilet paper. Or is it cleaning tissue? No, it's toilet paper. Desperately sticking to the back of the blue plastic <laughs> board. <coughs> the cranberry juice went down. <coughs> oh, didn't I try to flush it down the toilet? It's a metaphor for you. Ah, uh, I get it. Below the pathetics, terror. Do not look into its blue heart. Inspect the toilet paper, inspect the clip. Browse the white papers, browse the yellow papers, look at the clipboard, smell the ledger. I don't think you want to do any of these. It's just toilet paper. Stick it to the back of the plastic clipboard. You can take it off if you want. <laughs> take it off, leave it there. It's cool. <laughs> Maybe it's a kitchen tissue. They look exactly the same. If you want it to be kitchen tissue, it can be kitchen tissue. It's <laughs> not though. It's toilet paper. Fine, take it off. Still wet, the toilet paper, I mean, kitchen tissue, sorry, <laughs> peels off the plastic easily. All you have to do is shake it off your finger and voila, the ledger now looks marginally better. Cool. Inspect the clip. An aluminium block runs the width aluminium. of the board, biting down on the paperwork. Its crocodile teeth are the only thing keeping the papers together. A regular pencil, the tip worn down to nothing, has been attached to the clip. Run your finger across the aluminium. <laughs> the surface is interrupted by a silvery sticker. It's rectangular, sparkling with iridescence. You don't know how you didn't notice it before. Hmm. Lieutenant, is this one of the hologram watermarks you mentioned? Point to the sticker. What? Yes, uh, allergen watermark used for adding information to RCM property. Interesting. What kind of information? How can I read it? That's all, thank you. Um, interesting. How can I read it? It depends. Aside from an anti-counterfeiting stamp, mine has my station number and address. The information varies by date of issue. Oh. How many years you've been on the force, he's thinking. It'll have that. I wonder if it has my name on there, my address. Like, how can I read it? Any capable light with the right wavelength will do. Like, for example... All RCM vehicles have headlights designed to reveal halogen watermarks. Oh. Mine too. Cool. Let's do that. This means you can read the watermarks if you just turn the lights on. Let's do that. That's all. Thank you. Okay. He returns to his neatly kept notes. While a bunch of sodden papers sag from the clipboard in your hand, it's a sorry sight. Browse the white papers. They're not exactly white. They're yellowed in patches by sunlight and alcohol and covered in dense blue handwriting. Ink escapes into watercolor patterns, reaching its tendrils across entire pages. The paper itself is checkered with faint red lines, forming short paragraphs. Once in a while, there's a red stamp that exclaims, case files commit to paper. The case files themselves are plenty. You count more than a hundred sodden, crumpled up, earmarked pages falling apart in your hands. They appear to be sufficiently organized and extremely dense, if mostly illegible. What is in there? What are they about? Work, strife, poverty, the Jamrock Quarter. These are handwritten logs of investigations dating back to January 51, this year. Hmm. The exact number is hard to estimate, due to missing pages and an odd naming convention. But there are at least 20 Maybe 30 cases. Undertaken. Not completed, mind you. It's the middle of March. You have attempted two cases a week on average. Wow. That's pretty high, isn't it? I have to sneeze so bad. Is two cases a week good caseload, Lieutenant? There's a mention of a naming convention here. Count the pages. I have to open an official case. Is there room? Or I'm done inspecting these. Um... Is two cases a week a good caseload, Lieutenant? <laughs> huh? Two complex cases to undertake is a lot, yes. You really have to push yourself. I would not suggest it, lest you start making mistakes. Yeah, that's what I thought. Two cases a week appears to have been my load, Lieutenant. I'm not sure I completed them, though. Not on return to the case notes. Uh, 
Just tell him. Two. That's a lot. I didn't mean to say you are making mistakes, by the way. That was presumptuous of me. I'm sure I made plenty of mistakes. But I burned out all right. A nice brisk pace, the way I like it. Uh, I'm sure I've made plenty of mistakes. It's okay. We all make mistakes. He nods and turns back to his own case files. God knows I've made my share. He tries not to think of them. <laughs> like a fan of girls, the checkered papers dry in your hand. The handwriting is extremely dense, if mostly illegible. There was mention of a naming convention here. Yes. It appears you employ a, shall we say, robust yet literary system. Each investigation has its case number written on the margins. Yet, still more tellingly, most are accompanied by a name. A title, one might say even. One that draws inspiration from snoop fiction and vespertine cop show staples. Oh my, and they're written in capital letters too. I don't want to <laughs> back to the case files. Yes, all caps. One is called the Next World Mural. Another the square bullet hole murders. Another yet, the unsolvable case. More? Others appear more lighthearted. The guys on a couch in an unexpected location, and the murder at the hookah parlor. Even the rare Hookah. article free collapsing tenement. Murder features prominently throughout. It's going to take an effort to piece these case files together, but it can be done. Once you're done inspecting them, up close. So I was naming them all in like some sort of. <laughs> so I was giving them their own nicknames and stuff for each case. Can my cases appear to employ some kind of naming convention? You mean the alphanumeric? Officer, precinct, time of arrival at the scene? That's the one. <laughs> That's a lie. Or I could say, no, I mean a non numeric one with titles. Oh, you mean the titular? Yes, well, so do I. In our defense, almost everyone in the RCM does. Why is that? It's a holdover from the early days of the RCM, right after the revolution, when the organization had little idea how to do things. It persists in an unofficial capacity. Officers use these titles to refer to their work among themselves. I seem to have named a case the Square Bullet Hole Murders. Don't mention it. <laughs> uh, I want to see what he thinks. Again, in your defense, I seem to have named one the man with the hole in his head. <laughs> that was a real person. His death was real. Still, I named it that to amuse myself. <laughs> he's so cute. Stop it. I pray his loved ones never find out. <laughs> At least he has like a sense of humor, too. What happened to him? Rail spiked through the head. He died. Yikes. It was a workplace accident. Yikes. Count the pages. I have to open an official case. Is there room? There is, for precisely one more. Fifteen pages near the end remain untouched by the damage. The checkered grid forms a structure of passages, breaking the case <coughs> into subtasks to accomplish. Commit to paper. Sadly, the letter only comes with an old, worn-down lead pencil. Oh, come on. It's unfitting of this monumental event. Sure, Kim has a pen. The ledger only comes with an old, worn-down lead pencil. It will do. Yeah, see? Barely. But... Kim, do you have a pen? Lieutenant looks at his blue notebook. Two fat, shiny pens hang from the binder. He is not really saying anything, just standing there, looking at them. Can I have one? <laughs> Fine, I'll just use this crappy pencil. Can I have one? Know that I give this to you with resentment. <laughs> With this beauty, commit to paper. The tasks you've completed flow out of the blue oblong pen in a brash freehand uncannily similar to the rest of the letters. The wording comes easily. It's almost robotically simple. A language developed for mental rigor and simplicity. Can I name it? Inspect the victim's body. Get the body down. Interview the cafeteria manager. I did most of these. It's not exactly poetry, but poetry would be out of place. Cross out the ones you've already finished, yes. A satisfying slash sounds across the paper. You're done, it seems to say. And you, and you. <laughs> things to be done, and things already done. The composition of reality. 
This is an extremely useful tool for a detective of the citizens' militia. Now all that remains is to name the case. Lieutenant, have you by any chance named our case? No, actually. Any ideas? <laughs> I saw the other one. <laughs> the Hanged Man. The Furies are at home in the mirror. The setting sun shit on a stick. <laughs> actually, I don't have one. I really want to name it that. <laughs> when I replay this game in my off time, I'm picking shit on a stick, but right now, I think I'll go with the hangman. Great. That's great. That's actually what I was thinking too. Aww. The hanged man. Good, strong name. We have a very good name for the case now. Oh, you really like that one. I'm going to start calling it the hanged man. It's good to be sorted this out. <laughs> Done inspecting these. Close the case files. You don't exactly close them. So much as distance yourself from the smelly papers. They're a little further from your nose now. Okay. Let's pull the ledger away for right now. <laughs> oh no. This broken eared mug somehow made its way into the whirling and rags dumpster. It depicts a person of Semarin descent, frolicking in a field of saffron flowers, buck tooth and grinning feeble mindedly. It seems to be a cheap knockoff of some colonial era antique. It's just a racist mug. What's there to read here? Not much. <laughs> Good point. There's quite a lot to read into, actually. Look at all that content. Oh boy. Here oh, we go. no. <laughs> what are you going to say about a broken, tossed away mug that you dug out of the garbage? I don't know. This mug is an example of prejudice. I'm going to use it as an example of what not to do. I'm going to push this into the face of every merchant I find and tell them this is your inane ideology. This mug will be useful. By denouncing it, I can earn political capital. To mask my badass hustling, i.e. fraud and embezzlement. <laughs> this mug didn't belong in the trash, it was just a funny mug. Can't anyone laugh anymore? Ugh. <laughs> Every parent on Facebook be like, This mug is an example of prejudice. I'm going to use it as an example of what not to do. But it was in the trash. Why not just call it out when you see it? Or do some volunteering work. Just finish your case, detective. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> oh, is this his pen? Can I give it back? Oh, I can sell it, can't I? That's horrible. A blue pen, like a large caliber bullet that shoots out ink, once belonging to Lieutenant Kitsuragi, comes with a side or order of resentment. <laughs> oh my god. It's so funny. If I look like I'm dying, I inhaled popcorn. <coughs> I start choking on it. So now I can't speak very well. Anyway. <coughs> <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. Let's go visit that bookstore that that girl was talking about. Hey, girl. Let's go inside. <clears throat> I'm in pain. <coughs> I have such a headache now. <laughs> okay, nice little bookstore you got here. Hey, Lee. Welcome to Crime, Romance, and Biographies of Famous People. My name is Plaisance. Is that her mom? The girl outside. She was also on the line when we talked on the little uh, doorbell thingy. I think. I think. Don't know. <clears throat> the clerk extends a greeting. Be welcome, and please take responsibility for the energy you bring into this space. Huh. <laughs> Before we go on, you seem to be well off enough. Can you give me some money? I feel like there won't be an opportune moment to ask later. So are you the owner of this store? I am. The proudest owner of our little shop of culture. Her voice, high-pitched, sounds familiar. You talked to her before through the doorbell. <clears throat> yep, I remember. What if I want to buy a book? Your daughter is the one standing outside the store, right? Remember for now, book peddler. Uh, ask about her daughter. Annette, yes, my daughter. I hope she wasn't slapping <coughs> off again with her nose in science fiction. Tell me. Was she at her post, doing her job like a proper girl? This lady's a bitch. Yes, of course. No, she was definitely slacking off. It doesn't matter now. Tell me something else. Uh, yes, of course. Wonderful! Did you talk to her? Yes. Great! On a scale of 1 to 10, how compelled <coughs> are you to buy books after talking with her? Her opinion of her daughter depends on how well she lured you into the store. This lady's a bitch! I just love your daughter. She's working so hard. Ten, she's certainly very polite and helpful. Five, I felt some interest. One, not impressed. 
I'm not going to grade a human being. I don't do that. Come now. It's not personal. It's about proper sales practices and market research. I expect <clears throat> an answer. Ten. My precious, her dedication brings joy to my heart. If you have children, I hope they turn out as great as my Annette. The way you're handling her strikes me as wrong. And that is quite the trooper. She's a great value add. I'm here to dismantle the free market and abolish li child labor. Okay, let's change the subject. Uh, I'm going to call her out on her BS. Mind your own business, sir. In our society, people don't get to tell each other how to raise their children. It's none of your or <coughs> anyone's business. The way you're handling her strikes me as wrong. Mind your own business, sir. <laughs> In our society. Okay, fine. About your daughter. Oh, yeah. <laughs> How's my precious doing? She's a good girl. I'm here to dismantle the free market and abolish child labor. You must be kidding. There's nothing like that happening. Depends. How much do you pay the kid? Good, sir. What does a young child do with money anyway? No, I save it for her as a fund. She's securing her financial future out there. Such criminal mm -hmm. behavior would not <coughs> happen in more developed countries. In some more developed countries, this is sort of this sort of thing is two felonies: child labor and slavery. Oh, I guess I was mistaken. No, I keep calling her out. Those countries will realize they've raised a lazy and spoiled generation. Are we done with the jokes now? Okay, fine. Yes, we've had quite enough fun here. Right. The lieutenant taps his foot. Okay, let's change the subject. What if I want to buy a book? Then why are you talking to me? Everything is on the shelves to browse. Don't you feel compelled to buy anything? She fiddles with her pendant. See those shelves oh. there? Go. Be drawn. Then waves her bony fingers directly at you. Alright, I'll take a look then. Okay. She was annoying. <laughs> a small mountain of colorful board game boxes. There are numerous types of games for all ages. A lot of shelf space seems to be taken up by Wirral related merchandise. Storekeep. What board games do you have here? Let's see the piles of Wirral related items. An endless variety of source books, law books, and codices litter the table. The topmost book is titled Welkin Compendium, second edition. There's also a large hardbound tome with intricate cover art, The Hunters of Catawack, Boreal Creature Compendium, and a Pick Your Path <coughs> adventure game book titled Tales of Wirral, Cavern of Velkrag. Books hmm. in a board game section? Who wants to read books? <laughs> Anything that really catches my eye? Hmm, maybe I'm not into all this Spinoclard stuff. Anything that catches my eye? There's a box that says, Wirral, 3rd edition Mega Setting Supplements Module. The side panel notes, a fantastic adventure board game, new maps and miniatures. <laughs> a sticker on it displays 25 real. Damn it. I only have 60 cents. <laughs> I want to, oh, okay, well, I can't. Okay. I don't think there's really anything worth noting at the moment. The book collects the national recipes of Arda. They're all about lake trout. Old sports magazines tucked away in the dark corner. <laughs> Kim is so close. Okay. Whoa, what's going on back here, lady? Hey, what you got here? You see a set of tattered curtains blocking the way to another room. A strange cage-like trinket dangles from the curtains. Uh. Excuse me, officer. The back room is strictly for employees only. Hmm. Shopkeeper, what's behind the curtains? Examine the strange-like trinket. Strange cage-like trinket. Pull open the curtain and ignore the curtains for now. What's behind the curtains? Nothing. Now please go back to browsing the books. Don't you feel compelled to look at the books? The books are all you care about. She's like evil. She speaks almost as if she's trying to put a spell on you, urging you to buy more books. Oddly enough, the more she tries to draw you away from the curtains, the more alluring they become. Examine the trinket. You see some kind of charm, an irregular polyhedron assembled from bones, sticks, and straw. Inside, a disturbing fish head with empty eye sockets stares at you. Witchcraft? Aside from poking at it suspiciously, 
There is nothing else to do with the fish head charm at this time. The curtains remain shut before you. <sighs> Let's just leave them. But I'm definitely coming back here. What's this? Quaint picture book brochure. Very colorful. This whole set is so cute. It's a tome of fascist magic. Rather candid. Everyone knows the most interesting thing about fascists was their magic. She totally is a witch! Because she's into all this fascist stuff. Right? <laughs> Several maps have been attached to a bulletin board hidden inside the alcove. They're held up by small pins. The board has come loose from one corner. The maps mm. look old and faded. Your eye catches a map of Insulinda, a map of Revachol, and a map of Martinez. Look at the map of Revachol. The north coast of a verdant island is shattered by the delta of a river. It is the river Esperance. Countless bridges put the shards back together, connecting city blocks to river islands. La Delta says a great artificial heart in the center, teeming with life forms and construction. To the east, rolling hillsides, Le Jardin, Stella Marie, the suburbs of Saint Baptiste, swallowed up into the mega city. They sound rich to you. This is Rivershall East. In the west of the river? Houdon, it's somewhere to live. Not bad. Then there's Jamrock. It's bad. People shouldn't live there, but they do. Then Forberg. It's almost as bad and much larger. Then Coal City. It's the worst. And Martinez? It's so small you can't even see it on the map. No, wait. There it is, north of Jamrock, the strip of coast next to the Greater Rivershall Industrial Harbor. It looks downright despondent. It's almost Cold City, to be honest. No, this is somewhere to be. This is all you have, but mm. it's still something. Streets and sodium lights, the sky, oh. the world, you're still alive. Storekeep, can I buy these maps? I'm sorry, officer. The map of Martinez is the only one available. The other two are not for sale anymore. And besides, you could scarcely afford them. They're quite valuable, though they might not look it. The map of Martinez is 90 cents, though. Uh, I'm so close. Why is the one of Martinez so cheap? That old thing. It's an out-of-date map of a tourist location that never was nor came to be. Oh. From when some design studio people tried to spruce the place up four or five years ago, they also renovated the horse statue, set up those coin-operated viewers, and designed the new street lamps. Hmm. The place does not look like a successful tourist trap, does it? What happened then? They didn't get that far, for some reason. A shame the project never got going. Would be nice if someone fixed Martinez up. <laughs> These ruins are bad for business. So I can buy the map or I can steal it instead. Let's not. Let's just leave and I'll come back when I can afford it. But should I just save my money for paying off my my bill where am i gonna get 130 buckaroos bye lady i hope your child is okay <laughs> okay let's explore around a little bit more what's around here does kim have any more dialogue uh no Dad reads broken window? Tibbs has windows. Oh. I wonder if we can go there and like get that uh, window replaced in my room. This coin operated viewer is facing southwest. Its coin slot is full of fossilized bubble gum, rendering the machine permanently inaccessible. Poor little viewer, pat it. Vandalism. Shake your head. Look inside. Uh <laughs> Poor little viewer. The metal feels cold and wet under your palm. It looks unhygienic. Look inside. A thick layer of graffito covers the lenses. You spell out the word, Onak, written on the other side, with N and C scribbled 
backwards. Shift your focus to the background. Under the graffito, a sea of blues and greys appear. Behind the water lies a coast, studded with concrete and reeds. On it, a church on stilts, lanky weather-worn wooden planks, an X-shaped cross topping its tower. The church looks old and weather-worn. There are no lights in the windows. Is that a end game? Around the large wooden building, you see chunks of sea ice gathered on the beach, and a small tent set up on the ice. Huh. Wonder if someone's living out there. Vandalism. Probably some kids. The lieutenant inspects a rig rig rigged slot. Blech. A simple but clever solution to ruin in a coin operated viewer. It took ingenuity. Uh, stupid kids. What's in the trash? If you had a bag in your hand, perhaps you could collect these bottles and sell them. Do you got a bag, Lieutenant? Shit. I don't have a bag, do I? I know I should inspect that, um, frickin' tattoo guy sometime. Round about north. Keep side apartments, Martinez Pierce. Okay. Hmm. What's over here? Hey, little birdie. Is that a birdie? Lamoli <laughs> Cormoran. What is it? <laughs> Surveys the sea. I didn't finish reading it. Damn. Oh well. Whoa. The belly of this boat shines like it was recently painted. It's a bit weird. Whoa, where am I going? Where am I going now? Whoa! <laughs> Okay. Oh, what is this? No, not. Ugh. Nice. That can reserve for residents of Rudis Saint 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 Saint. I for I didn't even read it all the way. Whoa, who's this dude? Hey, dude. Oh, it's a lady. <laughs> okay. Wait, didn't... Don't they have a beard? I don't know. Joyce May Maysir? A striking woman leans against the cabin up top of her sailing boat. Smiles... Smiling as you approach. Her green raincoat glistens with droplets. A silk scarf is tied around her throat. Good afternoon, officers. There you go. I'm Joyce. She extends her hand in greeting. Joyce L. Messier. I represent the board of Wild Pines, the owners of the harbor. You gentlemen must be from the RCM. She steps closer and holds out her hand over the railing. Joyce L. What does the L stand for? <laughs> Why does that matter? What exactly is the RCM? I remember hearing from... It's somewhere... I... Me! <laughs> you are! What gave us away? Shake her hand, don't shake her hand. Uh, shake her hand. I'm glad to see you here. <laughs> my, my glove. Her grip is tight and cold. Like steel. There is strength there. If she wanted, she could sink her nails deep into your skin. Scary. I was dispatched to handle a strike, not a lynching. Anything I can do to assist the RCM in this matter, I will. Gladly. Is she the leader of something? Hold on. Who is she? That is good to hear, madame. My colleague will take the lead on this interview. I should let you know that he is recovering from a... Unusual <laughs> medical episode. Very unusual. But I can assure you <laughs> of his ultimate competency. Thank you, Kim. What a wonderful introduction. There's a trace of irony in his voice. Mischief, even. The lieutenant is hatching some scheme. Hmm. How interesting. I wish you a swift recovery. In the meanwhile, you have my full cooperation. And the full cooperation of the Wild Pines group. Thank you. <laughs> this one, you seem rich. Can I have some money? <laughs> oh my god. You're on a boat. Yes. Thank you, Captain Obvious. Tell me about the Wild Pines. What do you do? Can you tell me about this strike? Can you tell me about this lynching? Do you know someone, something about these tattoos? Show her the photo. That's the man who was killed. 
I'm afraid this is a discussion for once we've cleared the lynching question. Fine, let's return to it later. Better not tie the fourth day to the bat's day on this. I hope there is something else I can help you with. She wants to answer the question. Protocol keeps her from it. What can you tell me about this strike? Everything. Right up to, but not including, trade secrets. Wait, what if I want to hear about the trade secrets? <laughs> what is this? What is your role in this precisely? I believe the official title is Senior Labor Negotiator. In practice, I'm a grocery clerk. I relay the Union's demands to Wild Pines and return with Wild Pines' counteroffer. And how are the talks going? They're not. That's the problem. The Union stopped all negotiations a week ago, after that awful lynching took place. Hmm. Now they won't even let me into the harbor. There's a 2 meter 20 racist behemoth blocking the gates. Tell us more about this behemoth. How are the talks going before the lynching? Uh, tell us more about the behemoth. <clears throat> what can I say? The Union employs a giant covered in tattoos. A racist giant. I guess that's part of their big tent organization now. Okay. How are the talks going before the lynching? Let's say I was not making what I'd hoped for when I first arrived. And when did you first arrive? I arrived three weeks ago. Yes, in the middle of February. The bay was still partially frozen then. I prefer to do these things on site, like the RCM. But the strike began in December. Hmm. I wasn't the original negotiator here. I took over after Mr. Gaumont hit a wall with Mr. Clare, the union boss. Mr. Clare refused to speak with Gaumont despite concessions he'd granted the union in prior negotiations. This isn't the first time the Union has gone on strike? Heavens no. There have been two prior strikes. Both times the Union won significant concessions, including overtime pay and a medical plan. This time their demands are more... I guess you could say... aggressive. Ludicrous, Eva. It's meant. What happened to this, Gaumont? What are their demands? Tell me more about this union boss, Mr. Clare. Ah, uh, what happened to this Gamont? Mr. Clare told him to... How did he put it? She pauses to compose herself. Fuck off, midget. <laughs> Gaumont is short of stature, you see. <laughs> hmm. Okay, then. Cool. Not cool. Not cool. Keep in mind, this is a negotiator Mr. Clare has worked with before, and who was more than <laughs> fair with him and the union. <laughs> sure. Sounds like usual aggressive posture. Tell me about this union boss, Mr. Clare. Everett Clare is a man of the utmost integrity. If you can say one thing about him, it's that he always puts the interests of the workers first. Really? Of course not. Everett is fantastically <laughs> corrupt. I imagine okay. he has a thick, viscous goo where you and I have blood. Damn. Isn't he the guy that we need to ask about getting the body down? I think Kim mentioned him at some point. Is he that bad? He is the most corrupt individual I have ever seen, and I deal with men like him for a living. If there is anyone more venal, more irredeemably nepotistic, then it's his twin brother, Edgar. Wait, there are two of them? Yes. Edgar looks exactly like his brother, except for that lazy eye. He also talks exactly like Everard does. And when one's term as foreman is up, the other takes over. It's how they circumvent the term limits, you see, with a funny little switcheroo. While in office, they've embezzled God knows how much of their workers' dues. What about the union itself, outside the Brothers Clare? The Daybarders Union was once a perfectly normal institution. Twenty years ago, anyway. It must not have been easy to establish under the Emergency Act, but they did it. I can respect that. Organized labor at its best, as they say. Then something happened in the local chapter elections. The Brothers Clare came and transformed it into a... How do you say? She hesitates, looking for the right expression. A mob. The Debardeurs are a crime syndicate. Sad as it may be, I suspect we'll be forced to cooperate with them. It's not out of the question that they would do this whole lynching operation. Although it seems like it's more intense. Also, what is up with that torture room that that lady had back in that bookstore? 
I kind of want to know about that. Refreshingly <laughs> honest officer. The company has tried appeasing in the past, but I'm afraid our concessions have only emboldened Everard and his brother. And your opinion, detective? If I may ask, I'm a curious and talkative person, you see. Yes. <laughs> say the Debardeur's union <clears throat> is. An effective advocate for the rights of local workingmen. A giant leech sucking light, life of, out of Revachal. Basically a socialist mob. I prefer not to have an opinion on these things. Um... How go is Kim's opinion? Thank you for being candid. Sadly, Wild Pines have cooperated with what amounts to a crime syndicate for two decades. However much you feed the wolf, the wolf always hungers. I feel like, um, she'd be a good, like, like, thank you, Mr. Bond. Like, <laughs> like she's kind of like the girl behind the scenes. I don't know. I don't know what I mean by that. Uh, well, let's change the topic. How else can I help? You know something about these tattoos? That's the man who was killed. I'm afraid this is a discussion. So you know for something about the tattoos? Not tie the fourth day to the bat's day on this. I hope there is something else I can help you with. She wants to answer the question. Protocol keeps <sighs> her from it. Fine. Quite a few things, I'm afraid. Oh. I thought I already asked that. Maybe I didn't. Uh, what can you tell me about this lynching? Quite a few things, I'm afraid. Fall silent for a moment, contemplating something. The information I'm to share with you includes sensitive trade secrets. For the sake of my employer, I have to ask for your names and badge numbers. Uh, yeah, about that. <laughs> of course, ma'am. We should have introduced ourselves. I am Lieutenant Kitsuragi, from Precinct 57. That's... <laughs> Lieutenant hands her a piece, piece of blue plastic. And this is my colleague from Precinct 41. I'm afraid he doesn't have his badge at the moment. I hope mine will suffice. Or my name. How curious. Why is that, Detective? Um. Awkwardness washes over the conversation. The woman doesn't like this turn of events. Uh, you know what I should have done before I talked to her? Is looked at my notes under the specific light from his car. Let's see what happens. Remember when my partner told you I'd recently suffered from an unusual medical episode? My lost badge is related to it. I see. So are you saying you lost your badge during the course of this episode? It's possible. After a night of heavy drinking, I lost all memory of my life and the world. <laughs> I could have eaten it for all I know. I don't remember anything. This world, this city, nothing. Um. Yes. I can't hear you, darling. Speak up, please. Oh, come on. <laughs> it's not letting me get off easy. It's possible after a night of heavy drinking, I lost my memory of my life in the world. Oh, dear. Some kind of encephalopathic amnesia. I don't even know how to respond. I am so sorry. I do believe you, naive as that may sound. I simply can't imagine what you gain by faking such a condition. Neither. As I said, ma'am, his technique may be very unconventional, but he <laughs> is an officer of the RCM. Of course, I sympathize, but I'm afraid I simply can't share anything more until I've seen that badge. Oh, come on! Hang on. She's a professional negotiator. She should be open to some sort of mutually beneficial arrangement. Uh, what kind of arrangement would that be? Suggestion, medium, how do I negotiate my way out of this? Sympathy for your amnesia. Uh, I cannot retry it. Feeling. Damn it. Will guide the way. But ma'am, I need to know about this lynching. It's very important to me. It's a case I'm solving. I assure you, it is no small matter for me either. We all share the responsibility for disarming this situation. I hope you have a badge for me as soon as possible. You don't understand. It's not like a side case for me. This is my main thing. <laughs> you have so much else. I only have this. Spread your hands. This is the entirety of my existence. Oh my god. These options are so bad. Uh, grovel. She is silent. The wind flaps the sail above her. This boat, for example. In a home somewhere. I only have this case. Officer. Shit. 
The carbon fiber hall creaks. No! <laughs> no! I don't know. I want to back out of this. Just forget it, lady. Forget it. My ass hurts. I don't remember anything except the slinching. There's only this coast and the slinching. This is... This case is what I'll be known by. Ugh, God. You know, I don't mean to sound cold, but if you want something, you have to give something back. More than just guilt. You're doing it. Despite your own best efforts, you're still getting in. Somehow. Am I'll I... I'll be frank with you. If I'm going to break protocol, I need to be able to justify it to my superiors. They're going to want to see something tangible. Like what? The Union is conducting drug trade out of the harbor. It's an open secret in Martinez. Surely it must not come as a complete surprise to the RCM either. Perhaps it's time to look into it. Or you can find your badge, which honestly seems like a lost cause. I think so Detective. too. A word in private before we continue. <laughs> oh no, he's gonna kick my ass. Oh, excuse us for a moment, madam. Shit. Okay. Sorry. I know you want to talk to me. This is not going quite as I hoped it would, Detective. The lieutenant's voice is hushed. How did you hope it would go? Honestly, I was expecting you to use your unorthodox technique to keep her off balance, and you know, not volunteers to be her henchmen. Oh, so we're henchmen now? Really? I thought it was going so well. <laughs> this woman is running circles around us. She might have known about your misplaced badge all along, or she's simply an adept improviser. Either way, we've played <sighs> straight into her hands. Good point. He doesn't let it show, but there is a limit to how much the consequences of your unprofessional behavior can cost the investigation. Shit. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, no. I'm sorry for putting us in this situation. I'll handle it. What do you propose? That we don't investigate the, dr the drug trafficking? We could just, you know, find my badge. Um, what do you propose? Well, if there is reasonable suspicion, we must investigate. Otherwise, she could claim we are siding with the Union, or that we are on their take. We'd never hear the end of it. What I propose ah, is, we ask her, then we investigate, briefly. But do not share the outcome of this investigation with her. We tell her it's done, and demand for her information on the lynching. Could just, you know, find my badge. Oh, that would be fantastic, but do we have the time? The world is large, and your badge is 8 by 6 centimeters. <laughs> you could request a new one from your station, but that would literally take months. Ah, shit. Sorry for putting us in this situation. I'll handle it. I'm sure you will, detective. Let's get back to her then. <laughs> okay, we're back. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> You're back. Good. What can I help you with? That's all. Of Thanks. course, detective. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Shit. Let's go back and. Uh, I don't think I should be going over here right now. I, there's other things I'd like to do. You know, I was also thinking, what happens at the end of the day here? I don't have any money for my hostel room. Um. Where am I going to stay the night? I have nowhere to stay the night. <laughs> Literally nowhere. But that's that's okay. Oh god. Let's go here to his car. Let's see. If I can look at my inside, you see a set of steering levers. A radio. Tim, how do I turn on the headlights? A pull out tool. Alright. Ready? I turn, you press start. It's next to the preheater. He turns the preheater on, Waze takes out his keys and says that. <laughs> He's downplaying his excitement. The lieutenant is more than happy to show off his precious Aww. carriage. Aww. It's so cute. He's so excited about his car. Press engine start. The dashboard lights up with orange glow. The raspberry cage jumps and the engine of the caprice comes to life with a whiny growl. I couldn't hear a thing you said, bro. 
Press the button labeled headlights. The lights unfold with Whoa. a little click, casting electrical light onto the ground before the vehicle. There you go. I'll turn them off from the remote once you're done. We just need to stand in front of the machine now. Nice. Those are some bright headlights. This nail is never coming off. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look at our shadows. How cool is that? Oh, I really like that. It goes on for a while, too. That's so cool. As you hold your ledger's clip under the headlamp, an iridescent hologram appears. A street grid and the veins of a great river. A familiar sensation washes over you. There she is. Revachol West. There's a note of pride in the lieutenant's voice. Around the borders of the watermark are dozens, no, hundreds of micro perforations. Look at the shimmering street grid, or look at the perforations. Uh, street grid? The rectangular watermark is overlaid with the logo of the RCM, and yet the major arteries of Revachol are all recognizable. They shimmer in the Kanema's headlights. Wait, look around you. Where are we on this? Point to the halogen now. Look around you. A rat brazenly darts past you and disappears amongst the stop lorries. In the distance, a child somewhere shrieks. A woman reprimands her in a voice no quieter than the child's cry. Ah, Martinez. <laughs> he smells the air and says, Where are we on this? Let me see. He takes the ledger for a moment and inspects it. Right here. He says, his finger near the top of the map, on a segment of coast jutting out into the great ocean. Seems nice. Seems like a shithole. I'm sure I've seen worse. <laughs> Seems nice. No, it does not. The lieutenant says without optimism. <laughs> I was just trying to play it up, I guess. Look at that, there's even two shadows on the ground. Look at the perforations. There are many of them, and they are divided into three separate rows. Tally up the different rows. The first row has 18 dots. Not bad. <laughs> what about the next one? The next is the longest. It runs all the way around the border, and then some. Count them individually. There are so many, it's hard to count. More than 150, at least. Maybe even 200. What about the last row? The last row has three perforations. Three, that's it? That's it. Hey Kim, what do all these holes mean? Point to the dots on the watermark. Those are perforations. They represent your record as an officer of the RCM. They are your statistics, as it were. I should have guessed you'd keep a record. Officers often do. Let's take a look. Huh. Okay, so it's showing all the cases that I took. So three... I took like two cases a week, it said. So... And then the last row had only three. Hmm. Alpha male officers who are proud of their numbers <laughs> often do. It's meant. <laughs> the first row represents your years of service. 18 years. Okay, not bad at all. What did you do before you volunteered? I don't remember anything, Kim. Wait, 18 years I've done this? Got drunk like a megastar? I've walked the land and telling whores and liars of the end to come. There are 9,855 days remaining. Probably some boring office jobs, same as everyone else. I feel like I just went around apologizing all the time. <laughs> you know, this game is calling me out. Do you really think I have any ideas? Uh, wait, 18 years I've done this? That's what it says. I might have guessed even longer based on your age. What did you do all those blissful years of your youth? I feel like I just went around apologizing all the time. Maybe you were a diplomat or in PR. Doesn't matter, I suppose. <laughs> Let's move on, shall we? This next row, the one that wraps all the way around, is your number of closed cases. Closed is good. It means finished. You've got, let's see, wow, more than 200. Is that a lot? It's quite a lot, even for someone who's been on the force for nearly two decades. Usually, clearing more than 10 cases a year puts you in the 90th percentile of all RCM officers. Whoa. I also just thought of something. I'm guessing that we won't find out our character's name. 
through the whole game to keep that role play aesthetic not aesthetic but like putting yourself into the character making the character your own role playing you know and the fact that you have amnesia means that you can craft this character into who you want him to be and not be tied to any sort of personality trait that you used to have so that's really interesting and i guess i just thought of that as <laughs> you know as obvious as i'm sure it was i just sort of thought about it but anyway so you're saying i used to be a super cop i used to be good that's some solace i guess what's the last number i don't even think i can ever re-become this person what's the last number right those are your confirmed kills you've got precisely oh three perforations there so i'm a killer i was expecting a higher number honestly it's not too many so i'm a killer for an RCM officer, especially Precinct 41, which is in the Jamrock Quarter, it's rather um, tame. I mean that in a good way. There are certain officers who treat their kills like some kind of ghoulish game. If they do happen to solve a case, it's usually by accident. <laughs> it's obvious the lieutenant doesn't think very highly of these officers. But it seems as though you are, or at least were, one of the good ones. So we have that to be thankful for. Have you ever killed anyone, Kim? How do you handle the strain? Oh, I want to pry so bad. He's not gonna. He's not gonna take this. Yes. Though. Oh. He says, declining to elaborate. It's not a problem for him to state it. However. Interesting. Very interesting. How do you handle the strain? Everyone has their own method of coping. Some more effective or self-destructive than others. He gives you a meaningful look. Personally, I find it helps to keep up a few hobbies. Like what? Oh, this and that. Let's not get into it now. <laughs> no, tell me. <laughs> Maybe I should find a hobby. Why not gardening? You've already got the gloves. <laughs> he points to your yellow gardening gloves. It's meant in earnest. Please don't mistake it for a jab. Oh, thanks for this. The lieutenant nods. What a cute moment. Okay, let's go. Right, I'll go turn off the lights. He presses the remote control on the key. Nice. The music is so good. It's good. So we looked at the ledger. It's the ledger you found in the trash. A cabbage of papers hanging from the board mm. with the permeables drawer inside. It's barely held together by a clip, then made complete by the faint smell of urinal cleaner. Yep, I remember. Let's smell the ledger. The acidic stench <laughs> of rotting food is rubbed off on Ew. the cellulose. It now forms the base of the experience. This base surrounded by a faint air of spoiled meat, the stuff of death itself and then sprinkled liberally with the citrus zest of toilet cleaner. Ew. Can I read the case files now? It's Damn proving it. to be harder than expected. You just don't have the intellectual rigor to patch the quilt back together. Try again later. Damn it. It's possible, yes. Easy, no. You need to come up with a small archaeological system to reorder the remains of your past works. At the moment, all they do is fall apart in your hands. Some dates, the numeric t titular system is all you have. Uh, okay. Look at the clipboard. It's made of dark blue plastic, hard enough to beat someone to submission with. The edges are rounded, however. The U4 size board feels thick and heavy in your hand. Light shimmers on its wet surface. On the back, you see the embossed letters RCM. What did you say the color was? Shake the ledger back to the rest of this mess. What did you say the color was? Blue. The blue heart. Don't look into it. Okay. Shake the ledger. Something rattles inside ever so lightly. Is there a hidden compartment? Peek inside. The plastic shimmers like lapis lazuli, but it is <laughs> not see-through. You cannot see to its center. 
I just think of Minecraft. How would I open it? With your hands, you four sized pages hang from the clip screwed to the top of the board. Uh, open the hidden compartment on the clipboard. I can retry it if I can't open it. Um, uh, let's try it. Mm. Yay! The two sides of the board appear slightly misaligned, like a drawer that's come off its slides. If you bend the plastic on your knee slowly, the slides snap back into place. It should be possible to just, you know, Slide the drawer open. Wait, somehow, I don't want to. Fuck no. Put the ledger away. Slide the drawer open. Without resistance or sound, the two panels move against each other. The compartment is now open. What's inside? Two ticket stubs and a handmade postcard. Uh, jeez. Pick up the ticket stubs. Pick up your card. Fucking kill yourself, you asshole. Close up permeable's compartment. Jeez. Uh. Okay. Pick up the ticket stubs. Two octopuses are smiling, <laughs> reaching their tentacles toward each other in the colored pencil drawings. The tickets permit access to the zoo in Revachon East. The aquarium costs extra. These let you go there, too. These little mementos? Pick up the card. Thin wax paper has been glued to a piece of cardboard. Sounds like Place leaves rustling when you pick it up. You see violet flowers, floral patterns, patches of glue. You pressed like flowers? Smell at first. It smells of chewing gum. Apricot flavored. Okay. <laughs> a touch of cinnamon. The end of summer. You think the label says tutti frutti. It's so funny hearing those guys deep ass voice say tutti frutti. Open it. Familiar handwriting lines the inside of the card, looped round letters in a woman's hand. There was someone in my past. Ex-wife? Mm. A young woman in her 20s. There Maybe. is care, effort, and a smile. You think Although that is not something you can read from someone's handwriting. Harry, it begins. You're already reading. I wanted to write you a letter so you can read Harry. it when you wake up. Maybe it will make you happy. Is my name Harry? Hmm. Throw it away, please. But it will make me happy. A merciful wind blows in from the Bay of Revachon, dusting the ground at your feet and raising newspapers far away. You feel the card slipping into it. Hold on to it. Read the card. Your hands shake, holding on to it. Every morning when I oh. step out, you're asleep behind me, it says. I find a little piece of sadness in me. I carry it in my chest down Voyager Road. The background. Every step I take, it grows. By the time I reach the fuel station, it has filled me entirely. I step onto the light rail and look back. Sparks fall from the bow collector. I know it will be like this until late afternoon when I get off the 42 and walk back to you. Keep reading. You, you. Every step I take will get lighter. It almost makes me run. Sometimes I do. I can't believe I met you. I can't believe the happiness I feel with you. You have a vast, vast soul and I will always Always, always come back to it. Kisses, kisses, kisses. <laughs> you feel the air sucked out of your lungs Whoa. and the blood sucked out of your head. Everything around you gets dark. Small white dots appear. Uh, what did you I do to myself? You feel the ledger slip from what? your hand. What? Come no, on. No, hold on. Hold on. To what? There's nothing. Shit. Detective. Is everything all right? Fall sideways? You fall sideways. Shit! Oh no. Did I just die? Did it? Did I die? You can't die from reading a note? <laughs> Come on. What just happened? Brought up something from my past that maybe I was not supposed to look at yet. Oh no. <sighs> what? 
What? No! <laughs> Did I do something bad? Oh no. Son of a bitch! There is nothing. Oh my god, no! <laughs> no! Again. No! Again? Nothing? Nothing said, brother. No treachery, just blackout. Well, <sighs> almost nothing. There is the ground below you, that's still there. And the small light that's on, fluttering somewhere in the basal ganglia. Who's that? That's me. <laughs> Blue eyes. That's me. And who was that? Who was what? He speaks of the sickening longing. The unwell emotion. Even in the darkness, he's grasping <gasps> for it. Still <gasps> trying to hold on to the great sorrow slipping in the water. Slimy. No, I was cool. I'm cool. The cool when you're dead, brother. Here in the paleomammalian <laughs> cortex, we call it the shadow. I can't believe I really died. Because it's always there. So X something, the... Bloated corpse of the past resurfacing. No, it was beautiful. Beautiful. Believe me, stupid ape, its lack of beauty was not the problem. Where is Voyager Road? There is no Voyager Road. There are no roads, no houses, no lights in the windows. It's all on. Pause. Enough there, enough. Just lie there motionless. You think they would let you? until you disintegrate into biomolecules. No, someone is breathing on your face now, inspecting your pupils, stupid idiot. What is that? Um, it's cold. Yes, they're pouring something on you, something in you, and it's... It's delicious. Glowing lights on a dashboard emerge oh. out of nothingness. Oh, oh. <laughs> Oh, I'm alive. <laughs> oh my god, where am I? It's the upholstered cabin of Lieutenant Kitsuragi's motor carriage, seated in the driver basket. The air is thick with leather works and heavy fuel oil. Cold water runs down your chin. Drink. Water. Lieutenant is extending a small canister to your mouth. Drink. The water is cold, silvery. The stuff of life itself <laughs> as it pours down your parched throat. The pounding okay. in your head recedes. The darkness parts. Oh my god, I just had a heart attack. I thought I lost all my progress. Drink. You haven't drunk water in two days. Did you know the human body is not made to survive on alcohol alone? You need a secondary form of hydration. Drink. With greedy gulps, you down half a liter of cold water. Some of it spills on the driver's seat. The lieutenant pays no heed to it. What happened? Oh, oh my god, I wasn't expecting this at all. I should ask you the same. I came in contact with the burnt out ruins of the past, Lieutenant. I was dehydrated, it won't happen again. I, fuck it, starts climbing out of the motor car. Uh, um, I don't know if I should just be honest or not. I should ask you the same sounds like too accusatory, like he just helped me. Uh, I came in contact, burnt out drones of the past. That does sometimes happen. I didn't get a ledger of failure and hatred. He hands you the remains of your ledger. He replies with such understanding, it's as if the burnt out ruins of the past were an occupational hazard. Has a leaked foot for cops. <laughs> you dropped these. Are you okay to proceed? Just nod. Good. <laughs> oh my god. I can't believe that happened. I was so scared. I had heard that you lost all of your progress if you die. Let your 
failure, and hatred. This is the same letter you found in the trash, only worse somehow. It makes you think about the letter about a woman's handwriting and about not wanting to get out of bed in the morning. Shit, man. Uh, it's all cleaned up because he cleaned it up. Oh. Oh, I can hold it. Whoa. Whoa. How cool is that? White morning. You see yourself from above. You're passed out on the blue tiles of the hostel floor, room floor. Even from this distance, you can see your eyelids flutter. At the mention of what? A great white object letting out its sweet smell like a lily of the valley. The little man's forgotten its name, but he remembers the feeling. And look, he moves. The feeling animates him. He instinctively reaches out for the feeling's best friend, a bottle of Commodore Red. He puts on his disco clothes and gets smaller and smaller. Oh. What did I just do? Oh. Oh, does it give me a bonus? Bonuses from thoughts. Oh. Nice. Let's go inside again. So, my name is totally Harry, right? Oh, who's this dude? Hello. You're new. Hi, bald man. It's all about money, you know. You gotta spend money to make money. Yeah, can you give me some? <laughs> money is what really matters. Okay, shut up. I get it. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. This is open. Whoa. The dishes are drying. They smell of chemicals and pine trees. Can we look what's in the fridge? I have a thought. Hold on. Eh. The aroma of spices, alcohol, and tomato hangs in the air. Hi. Gorsi? Quebec? A thin man smoking is smoking below an exhaust hood, occasionally sipping from his mug. This must be the Whirling's cook. As you stop in, he nods towards the table and says something in a completely foreign language. The only words you can make out are Gorsi and Quebec. It must be his name. Garanzi. Garanzi. Garanzi Quebec. Sounds representative. Ah, grazie. <laughs> grazie. Grazie. I have some questions to ask. Mr. Quebec, I'm here on official police business. Hello, sir. Got time for a few questions? Uh... I have some questions to ask. The man puts his cup down and replies something, his left hand drawing arcs in the air. You've got some impressive pots there. <laughs> I don't think I need anything else. Stay masculine. <laughs> Got some impressive pots there. He smiles and bangs his ladle against each of his pots in turn. It's almost like music, especially with the sounds of assorted dishes boiling and simmering on the stove. <laughs> okay, is that it? All right, well, I guess he can't really understand me, so. You see a heavy steel door with a prominent dimple lock. It's painted blue. You immediately feel drawn to the color. Blue is for mystery. Huh. Touch the door. Try to push on the door. I wonder where this door leads. I'll be back door. Mark my words. Uh, try to touch the door. The cobalt blue surface feels rough to touch. The stainless steel door is flush with its frame on every side. Blue does seem to be a reoccurring theme in this game. Old cobalt paint, rough on the fingers. 40, 50 years since this was painted, maybe. Well, try to push on the door. The door does not budge. Wonder where this door leads. You do? Lieutenant- It's a door in the back of the kitchen. Why do you care where it leads? <laughs> Lieutenant regards you as patient skepticism. I am drawn to its cobalt blue. It's part of the whirling in rags. There's something about this place that makes me want to know. Out of duty, we may find something pertinent to the investigation. All right, it's not important. Let's go. Uh, it's part of the whirling in rags. There's something about this place that makes me want to know. Eccentric. But okay, I suppose <laughs> we could look into it. As a side investigation. He's not bothered by your eccentricity. He seems genuinely intrigued himself. Nice. Yes, a mini side investigation. No, the door is a mega-investigation. 
The door and the main investigation will merge into a sterile investigation. A mini side investigation. Garth is the person to ask about this. The cafeteria manager. Okay. I'm sure he would love to talk to me. Oh. Woman's hand wrote yesterday's menu. Today starts in a man's handwriting. That's interesting. Is that my perception thingy? Let's go upstairs and see if anyone else is up there. I like how you can hear the music like faintly playing in the background. Very cool. Is she here? The door is closed. Still no answer. <sighs> okay. Did I check this room? Hello? <laughs> Hello? <laughs> I don't think Kim wants to go back in my room, but you know what? You don't have a choice. So, what's up with all this paint splatter, or like, blue paint splatter on my door here? The bed is cold and not particularly inviting, but it's yours. The sheets look awful. No time to rest yet. A mirror oh hangs on the bathroom wall. In it, your face adorned with the expression. Ooh. Interfacing. Challenging. Use your chain cutters to fix the faucet. Stop steam from fogging up the mirror. I wonder if I can do that. Hold on. Let's try. Chain cutters. Are they in my hand? Yeah, okay. A mirror hangs on the bathroom wall. Let's try it. In it, you, you handle the nice. chain cutters deftly, applying just enough pressure. The faucet regains a recognizable shape. The steam stops. Cool. This faucet is quite terribly mangled, but you just might be able to twist its parts into place. I told you that you needed those chain cutters. <laughs> Everything is connected. Everything has a purpose. Hmm. Your hands, however skillful, can't manage this task on their own. You should get your chain cutters out. The mirror begins to clear slowly without you having to wipe it. Okay. So this one's impossible, uh, but I can retry it, and I have a better chance now. Still Damn it. happening. It won't come off that easy. Okay, fine. <laughs> Kim is just like, what the fuck? <laughs> can you tell me what's behind this door, Lieutenant? Thank you. Let's see if she's uh gonna open up for me. The door is closed. Still nothing. <laughs> Lieutenant gives you a quick glance. He doesn't like where this is going. Try the handle. This door can only be opened with a key or from the inside. Okay, fine. Okay, I'm gonna leave this episode off here. I'm sorry. First of all, I'm sorry. This episode was kind of a mess. It didn't really do a lot either. I was just sort of wandering a little bit because I felt like playing this game. Um, but at the same time, I'm not gonna apologize because you know what? It's just fun to do whatever I want in this game and to hang out with the characters and explore. At some points I felt like this game kind of drags a little bit just when you're talking to characters and it, there's a lot of dialogue and sometimes it doesn't feel like it's going really anywhere. It's just a lot of exposition, I like that lady on the dock that I kind of screwed up a little bit and now we have to do another quest for her that Kim doesn't want to do, so sorry Kim, but either way. It's just fun to roam around, like I said, and I'm having such a good time with the characters. The dialogue is so funny. I scared the shit out of myself. I thought I totally got a game over and ruined everything. I, I, I thought I was like dead for good and I'd have to do everything over again. So glad that is not the case and I'm back. But it looks like Harry, I think is my character's name. It looks like he has a troubled past, to say the least, and all these memories are making him just like black out all over again, and it's almost like his brain is not letting him relive it at all, so every time he tries to, it just completely fails on him, so I have no idea. Hopefully we can uncover some things as we go on. This game is a blast. I really hope you guys are enjoying it, like I am, because 
he's just so good. I keep saying it every time, but I enjoy Kim's character so much. He's just such, like, he's a straight-faced guy, but you can tell he has a good sense of humor underneath, and he's just really selfless. And it was interesting to hear that he has killed someone, but he didn't want to elaborate. So, I'm guessing it was not a fun thing for him. Either way, I'm sure I'll be back with another episode for this very soon. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this late night video, please leave a like or subscribe if you're new because I'd really love to have you stick around and watch you play some video games and hang out with me. So yeah, I will see you guys in my next video. The, fork knife. The, the mic isn't even on right now. Fork, fork knife. This is this is my scar from fork knife. We got a number one victory royale, Aaron. Please. Fortnite, please. we about to get down. Please go. Please go. Thank you. You're welcome. That better make the cut. <laughs>